me like Lamar Jackson winning the MVP. How did you guys feel about that? Unanimously, might I add, unanimously. Rob, any, any feelings about that? I mean, was, uh, there was no debate of whether anyone else was going to win the MVP. Absolutely. It was rightfully deserved, and we're going to see in the future if Lamar Jackson is going to improve on his throwing game, but the fact that he's, he's making rushing records in the second year, you know, Crazy. he being, deserves he's it. He's already being compared to Michael Vick. He's the next Michael Vick quarterback, so that's insane. Even that's awesome to see, like a th the last pick in the first round doing something like this. Any other like surprise to you, Rob, that happened this NFL season? Like anything stand out to you? It was like, wow, that happened. Uh, I would say the disappointment of the, the Browns uh, franchise. Oh you know, we saw them preseason and we just thought like, yeah, they're gonna run away with the AFC North. But ever since the OBJ trade, I'm sure Jack Dorsey wants to bring that back because their offensive line suffered throughout the whole entire year. Baker got sacked like 40 times. Yeah, you know, the like, it was a completely no different team. Like, like, when this happened, I don't know about you guys, I thought of the Philadelphia Eagles. Remember when they made all those signings and they were supposed to be the dream team? Yeah. But what, like, so what did you guys think? Like, Lamar, any, any like, takeaways from this season? So on the positive side, Lamar Jackson definitely silenced me. I was one of his detractors. Really? Uh, you, didn't, you didn't believe he could be a quarterback? I, I didn't believe that he would be as effective as he was. Right, I definitely didn't see yeah. he would be a unanimous MVP. The Baltimore Ravens from wire to wire were the best team in the AFC up until it was time to actually prove it. They led the league in points per game, time of possession, rushing yards, rushing attempts. So I give John Harbaugh a ton of credit. Biggest disappointment for me would have to be Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown, over the last six seasons prior to this one, averaged 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns, and uh, pretty much had over, I would say probably was the best wide receiver I've seen since Randy Moss. Um, but he played his way out of a guaranteed contract, upwards $30 million with the Raiders, played his way off of the defending champion New England Patriots, and his life has been in a seemingly downward spiral since then. So I hope he can get back on track, but he definitely was a major, major disappointment this season. Especially like seeing like what the Raiders were able to do this season, you know, they were able to scratch like a couple like random wins out. So like you could see like if they had Antonio Brown, this team was built for Antonio, Bar Antonio Brown to be the leading receiver, and he just wasn't there this season. My positive observation was, unfortunately, <clears throat> we, I saw a rivalry about to begin with Baltimore Ravens and Kansas City, Kansas City Chiefs. Two dynasties. Two dynasties getting ready to begin. And you look at what John Harbaugh has done with Lamar Jackson, and you look at what Andy Reid has done with Patrick Mahomes, mm -hmm. and you just see, you just love it. You get to see, I was actually looking for the AFC Championship to be Baltimore versus Kansas City. Yeah, exactly. That would have been that would have been so entertaining. So entertaining. But Tennessee said no. We're gonna do what we have to do. But I also see a positive aspect with them as well, because Derrick Henry, he's killing it. Derrick Mike Vrabel showing that he can really be under that Belichick like, coaching tree. It's I did not. Great. I, I'll be honest, man. I did not see that team getting anything together. Like Mike Vrabel, absolutely. I think just shocked the entire NFL this year. Like if it wasn't for John Harbaugh and what he did with the Baltimore Ravens team, I wouldn't have had a problem realistically giving the Coach of the Year award to Mike Vrabel just because Ryan Tannehill was a throwaway quarterback nobody wanted, mm -hmm. and Derrick Henry turned into one of the best running backs we've ever seen this year. So it, it was definitely, definitely ups and downs with this season, but a lot of things to look forward to. Anything in the future, you guys, Rob, that you're looking forward to? Um, like a Tom Brady signing. You guys see any potential things with Tom Brady? I mean, East. Just leave it alone. Yeah, get out. Just go somewhere. <laughs> go somewhere else. Leave my Jets alone. Leave Let the Jets alone. Yeah, I think that's what everybody wants yeah, to hear. Everybody gone. in the AFC. So where, like, so where do you guys see him going then potentially? He's staying put. He's staying put. What do you think? I think Tom Brady's free agency or pending free agency will be the biggest season uh, for the NFL this off season. The NBA doesn't really get kicked off until the playoffs start around May. Um, but I think Tom Brady has a lot of options. Now, if we're talking strictly football, the Tennessee Titans and Indianapolis Colts really jump off the charts to me. If we're talking about football combined with quality of life and factoring in his wife and children, then I think Miami, the Los Angeles Chargers, or even the Las Vegas Raiders would be viable options. Definitely. Yeah, I, w I was personally thinking, I was thinking the Chargers because you got that potent offense and all you need is someone to just throw the ball to these players. You got a Keenan Allen, you got Melvin Gordon, for Austin Eckler who came out of nowhere this year. I, I don't know about you guys. You guys do any fantasy football this year? The one thing I noticed about the Chargers was that Pro Football Focus had their offensive line ranked 29th out of 32, which is not good. Tom Brady, we all know, is not fleet of foot, not exactly the most mobile quarterback. Very right? true. <laughs> so if he's were to sign with the Chargers, even though they have pieces on offense and on defense, Still they definitely need to, need to bolster them. that offensive line.
I agree with that. And, and then I, I guess you could say then the best spot would be Indianapolis. I would Definitely. Think. I like that because the offensive line is ready, and they were built for Andrew Luck, but he left them. So is, was that was that like another shock to you? Because let's not forget that happened this year. I feel like that happened so long ago, you know. Andrew Luck retiring, these players retiring early. Any takeaways from this and the NFL maybe needing to change something around? It just goes to show what the NFL is speaking about with safety. You know, guys are becoming more leery as far as their health is concerned, at what to go about, how to how to move, and how to go about living certain lifestyles. Because with the whole CCTE, it's like you get my son plays football, and the biggest thing that I have is his safety. Yeah. I get scared because he wants to go to the NFL. I'm saying to myself, Dominic, I really don't want you to go to the yeah, NFL. Yeah, because you <laughs> see the teams don't really have always no. the players' best interest. They don't have the best interest. And now, now you're starting to see players waking up to that and starting to realize. So I think we have a lot of good things coming in this NFL season. So thank you guys for joining us again. This was great talk. And no thank you for joining no us on the Sports Hitlist by the fans and for the fans, everybody. And uh, have a good night.